Thursday. Happy Thursday, Marva. Hi, Linda. Hi, Brooke. Appreciate you guys coming. Reminds me of your old bones. I know. I know. And that just gets like worse every year. I don't understand. It's like there's a warranty and it wears out way before the actual vehicle stops moving. Just saying. Alrighty. So this is, it's a Halloween card in that it has bones and things like that, but nowhere does it say Halloween on it. Because on the inside, I've just put no bones about it. You're a sweet friend. This is actually one of my favorite kinds of fun folds. Hey, Lorraine. And it is a book fold with a pop-up corner easel. And I just really like it a lot. It's one of my favorites. It's super, super easy, which is what's so cool about it. Because it look when your recipient gets it, they're like, once they figure it out. That first they have to figure it out. But they're like, ooh, ah, and you're just sitting there smirking in your little self knowing it was just too stinking easy. All right, so this one is decorated up and a um, little, I know, it's beyond clever. Just, you can just, you can write that in the comments. So clever, Mary. All right. Now, I just did want to give you a little update. Right now, the Bag of Bones stamp set is available. The coordinate dies are progged to be back in on the 11th of September, which is uh, Monday. So sometime next week, these come in. So if you don't have, kind of keep your eye on it and grab up the bundle when it comes, okay? Because it's really, really cute. And of course, if you don't have the deckled circles, boy, you really need to get them. Take a look at my special bundle number four, bunch of embossing folders and some standalone dies, including this one. You can save, oh, about 15% on buying them all together and you get free shipping with it, okay? So just take a look. Oh, thank you, Stormy. I appreciate that. Nothing like a little queuing in. Hey, everybody. Thank you all for joining. I appreciate it. And let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Okay, we have got a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of Starry Sky cardstock. And I am going to use my score tool. I could use my trimmer, but that means I have to open everything up. And with the computer sitting here on the desk, it's a little bit... Uh, not so easy to do. I don't have room. Okay, these are the easiest measurements ever. First, you're going to score it at five and a half, just like it was a regular old card. And then you're going to score it at six and three quarters. Oop. Then you're going to score it at six and three quarters without making that mess. And that is all. That is all the scoring there is. And let me uh, do a little quick with my, my uh, bone folder here so that I can get rid of that excess that I put in there. That little extra doohickey, it'll be covered up, but you know, I'm gonna think about it, so I'm gonna try to get rid of it a little bit. All right, now, before you fold this, we are gonna pull out our trimmer, and we're gonna score the diagonal, okay? Now, if you recall, this is the back, this is the front, and we want the diagonal to go this way, because we want the card to fold up like that. So, all you got to do, get your cutting blade out of the way, Ask me why I know that. Hey, from hot North Carolina. Yeah, it is a little bit toasty here. I'm not going to kid you. Okay, so all you got to do to do this is you put the corner, the top corner in the channel right here at the top, and you can kind of brace it against those two little, um, you know, well, I would call them doohickeys, but they're the little plastic doohickeys right there. And then down here, take that score line that you made at six and three quarters and put it right atop the channel. So you got the corner in the channel, you got the score line in the channel. You're gonna close this and make sure you're grabbing the light scoring blade, okay? You can, on, you'll only cut this about four times before you really do three checks to be sure you're using the score line. Just saying. Okay, that's all we need. So we're gonna set that aside and then we'll do a little folding. All right, a little fold, a little burnish. And then this fold, the six and three quarter line goes the other direction, like that. And in all classic book folds, the next step is to put a little bit of liquid glue on this. It's about an inch and a quarter space right there. You're just gonna put it right there and use that to adhere the front to the back. Et voila, you have a book fold, okay? But because we're so clever, we're gonna make an additional fold and we're going to have a nice little pop-up easel. So there's how it looks, all naked and unafraid. You know, have you guys watched that show, Ever Naked and Afraid? 
why would anybody do that? I don't, I do not care. I'm just sit, putting this out in the universe. I do not care how much money they offer me to go out with some other individual that I do not know, because I'm pretty certain they meet each other like on the airplane to the island. And then you shuck all your clothes and you live out in the place where all the things are trying to kill you. No, I just think I no, mm -mm. No, that's not for me. It's not for me. Okay, now let's go ahead and do a little decorating. I have used a couple of these deckled circles. There are 14 deckled circles when you buy these dies. So I am using the one, two, three, four, five, six from the smallest to cut out my DSP circle. And then the next biggest one, so seventh from the smallest to make a Cajun craze mat. Now this piece right here comes from this piece of DSP here. And I've got a little bit of tombstone that I don't want, but I'm gonna cover it up with my die cut tombstone. So, you know, it, it works out. All righty, now, thank you, Marva. I just don't get it. I know everybody, it's cray cray. It is cray cray. And then people judge you when they tap, when they, you know, if you tap out. Cause I would tap out probably about the time the helicopter. <laughs> yeah, just about the time the helicopter pulled pitch, I'd be gone. Okay, so that together like that, we're gonna take a few little pieces and parts here in triangles, they are triangles. Here's how you do triangles like this. You're going to start with a piece of square cardstock and this one is four inches by four inches, all right? And I did need this again, uh, sorry. And we're going to do our, we're going to cut it on the diagonal. So we're just putting both corners over the channel. So you get two triangles. Then your DSP square, a normal DSP square for my matting would be three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. When I do a triangle, I make the DSP square three and three quarters. So I go a quarter inch down from the size of my mat quarter inch down from a si from the size of my mat. So I had two pieces and I've got these here because I already cut them for my sample and I just kept them. So this was a three and three quarter inch by three and three quarter inch. And this was a three and three quarter inch by three and three quarter. And I just cut them on the diagonal. It's, this is a lot easier to decorate if you use a non-directional DP. Okay. Something that doesn't, um, need to be up or down because if it does you've got to think that through when you when you cut it if it doesn't when you cut one of your squares into diagonals you get two cards worth especially if you're or one card if you're using the same dsp which i did not because there's so many cute ones i didn't want to pick there we go okay so now i'm just going to adhere this on some on the, those mats that i've made now, what's interesting is the rest of the measurements for mats, so like the inside mat is still going to be, is going to be four and an eighth, okay? So it all kind of works out. When you cut everything away because of the triangles, you got to do some adjusting. And if you're not sure, pull out a piece of printer paper and cut one to start with. Just saying, throwing that out there. That's what I did. As many of these as I've made, I probably could have found it in my blog history somewhere, but it was just easier to make one quick with some printer paper. So I'm putting this one here, and then I'm going to mat the other uh, design. Let me be sure I'm putting it. Good Lord, come here. Right, like that. Okay. So you could use this one, but if you do, then it only fits on this side. So, you know, it, it all works out. Just take your time, do the math, Make one with printer paper if you are at all uncertain. Just, just saying. All right, so we'll adhere that onto its little triangular mat. Not really sure why I'm trying to do that so cockamamie. What in the world? It's like my brain said, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. You just do whatever you're doing, Mayor, because I'm going to make you look like a goof bucket. Mm-hmm. Yes, I am. Hey, Marianne. Appreciate you coming. Loved your card, by the way. Thank you so much. Y'all, I just need you to know, I get a lot of cards in the mail, and I'm, I'm bad about acknowledging them, but you need to know they make me very happy every time I get them. All right, so if you don't hear from me and you've sent me a card, 
I really did appreciate it, even if I if I neglect to send you an email or something like that. Okay, so we have those two done. And then I picked this little guy. Now, those are bats for sure. But if you squint a little bit, they could be kitties. They could be black cats. They, they really could be black cats. I have used a lot of different designs from this paper, and it's because I love it. Now, this mat is um, one inch by it's one inch by four and an eighth i think better check that be sure i did it right yeah by four and an eighth so it's going to be kind of interesting you would think you'd see a difference here but wait wait you'll see there is no difference all right do make sure you put your bats right actually actually you know bats should hang upside down <gasps> i wonder if i should make them upside down what in the world um right side up because my brain is forever going to look at that and go that is wrong even though I know bats hang upside down Stephanie you are right we it's really crazy what's weirder is that we create the prizes and people go to them they watch the show they see the horrors they watch the people get by everything short of an alligator and and then they go yeah 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 I'd like to do that I think I could do that I could do that yeah, no, no, you cannot. All right, I'm gonna do my inside first, right? Quit. I know they could be cats. I think they can be what you want. That is what I say. And it's my card, and I'll call it what I want to. Okay, now on the inside, I'm gonna put no bones about it. You're a sweet friend, and I'm going to do that in Cajun Craze. Right in the middle of, this is a four inch by four inch piece of basic white, like that. And then I'm gonna stamp the bone kitty. Hey, I don't know, Robin, have you, have you got um, the notifications for all set? If you don't, the only thing I can tell you is when Amy goes live in Facebook, I usually get it about three hours after, after she's live. So, you know, it's pretty handy. I, I don't know how it works. Now, I'm gonna take the little kitty. This is all about the animals here. I'm gonna take a little kitty. And we're, there was a little bit of fin here right there. I'm gonna stamp him right there. And then, I'm gonna take a few bats. Uh, you know what, I don't know. I haven't had anybody else say, so it could be you. I'm going to take some basic gray now. And this little bat guy from the bag of bones. And I'm going to stamp him right there. And right there. Okay. And then we're going to adhere him to his Cajun craze mat and put him on the inside of the card. And then we can get to the really fun part. I have only discovered one actual problem with this bundle. Every time I pull it out, I think I know what I'm going to do with it. And I have like this finite set of things I'm going to cut out and things I'm going to use to decorate. And then I see another die. And I'm like, well, you know, that would be fun. And then I see another stamp and I'm thinking, well, that would really be fun. I should, I should try that. And the next thing you know, you're cutting out 700 million trillion things just because it's so fun. I am sorry, Jean. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, I, I will tell you, there was a little bit of, um, when I first went to go live, the computer acted like it wasn't gonna do it. It just spun there for a minute. So I suppose Comcast could be messing with us today. I don't know. I haven't had any trouble. I don't really know. Hopefully it's staying more in focus than out, but I make I can't make any guarantees because I don't know what it is. Okay, now I want to show you how we're going to make this crypt. Um, this die right here will actually cut out a DSP crypt from, from the DSP. And you can just cut it straight up. But I thought it would be fun to show you how to make something that I, I came up with because I'm so stinking clever. I am sorry, I'm not seeing it going in and out on my computer screen, so I don't know what the deal is. I can only apologize, y'all. All right, let me put 
chips aside before I do something stupid like get ink all over it. Now, I had a piece of basic gray cardstock. Wait a minute, wait for it, wait one, wait one. Oh, there it is. And it's not basic gray, it's smoky slate. Now, listen, look what I did. This is what I did. Here we go. I took this die and I'm smushing it down in the ink pad. And just remember, you now have ink on your bone folder before you do something. And you're probably going to have a little ink on your fingers. This is the definition of inky fingers. You want to press all over and then get a paper towel, <laughs> wipe everything off. Good, Brenda. I'm hoping it's working. All right. And you can pick it up. And you can see where you've got ink. I've got a little bit missing there, so I'm just going to push it down in a little better. Right there. That's going to be pretty good. You actually don't want it to be perfect, because what we're making here is weathered stone. See how it looks? We're making weathered stone. So then I'm going to put the... Let me get my... Um, Hang on a sec. I'm going to put this on my piece of smoky slate, and you want it to set it right down and not move it, okay? So put that on, and then I'm going to cut that out. So I'll be right back. Did you like my not at all new, not even sort of new cutting plates? I have five or six cutting plates, but I don't seem to remember to pull them out. Okay, so now what you get is that. <laughs> I know, that's fun, right? I'm just saying. Hey, Sherry, thank you so much for joining. I'm glad it's better. Okay, now I'm gonna put my ink away. Well, no, I'm not, I'm gonna keep it out for just a second. I'm gonna stamp this sentiment in the middle of the crypt with Cajun Crayish. And this says, eat, shrink, and be scared. Shrink. No, it does not say shrink. No. It says, eat, shriek, and be merry. So, jeez, I just think it's really cute. So I'm going to stamp it right there. And then, because that doesn't look old, does it? Not even a little bit. So I'm going to take a blending brush. And I'm just going to blend over it. like that with the basic gray and you want to not use a ton so start off of your your die cut like over here on your scrap paper and then bring it on you can always add ink but it's darn near impossible to get it back off there we go but I really liked how this worked I was I was just playing around and I was like oh that does work yay Okay, here we go. All right, let's, let's do this. Now we can decorate, because I've got some stuff all cut out. And I'm gonna need a design input from you here shortly, okay? Now, what's gonna happen is we're going to adhere just this lower portion of the circle to this pop-up area, all right? This is going to adhere on right about there, and what you want to be sure you do is make sure that that corner is well within the confines of the, of the book portion. Because otherwise, when you open it, ask me how I know this, when you open it, it's going to fold it in that little corner. Okay? So you want it to be, you want to cheat it towards the center of your card. All right? Now, we have some people. We have a little skeleton who is obviously cheerful and dancing. And he has his little Cajun crazed dog who is, because he's still a dog, playing peekaboo. That's how we're going to go with that. I've got a picket fence. Mm-hmm. That's going to go like that. Actually, we're going to put it behind the crypt, I think. Yeah, we're going to put it behind the crypt. And then this guy's going to go like this. And you want to put him just so 
you can still see your sentiment. If you can also see the bat, then you're batting a thousand. Ha ha, get, see what I did there? Okay, but we're gonna put on a die cut bat because they have die cut bats in here and you can use them and they're cool. And then he's gonna get a few other little accoutrements. Okay, so let's go ahead and put him together. The only one that is really, there's only two that are kind of, you gotta be sure they're on correctly. And that would be the start of the fence. I know, I am a regular card, I know. I'm just gonna use a little bit of liquid glue on about all but the last two pickets. Oop. And we're gonna put him right about there, like that. And you can leave it on the card front if you want while you're building this. I'm gonna do like that, because I like him a little bit a little bit cockamamie. There is not a fence in a cemetery anywhere that is straight. And if there is, I don't think it's a real cemetery. I, I feel pretty confident that cemetery fences need to be crookedy. Okay, so we're going to put that there. And if I open this, I'm well clear of my, cr of my um, fold there, so we're good. So I'm just going to put some liquid glue right there. Like that. All right, I like it. I like it. I think it's gonna be fine, it's gonna work. It's gonna work fine. Okay, now, I'm gonna adhere this. I'm just putting some liquid glue right in here. I know roughly where that circle goes. It's pretty big, and if you don't have ink, if you don't have glue every single wear behind that, it's okay because it squishes. That's the beauty of liquid glue. I mean, you can use seal here, but um, I wouldn't, I sure wouldn't. And you are correct, Faith, I really did. And wait until you see, because it, it gets worse. I'm just throwing that out there, it does get worse. All right, so now we're gonna put, um, just for the sake of things, let's call this Finn. We're gonna put Finn between my legs here because he's playing peekaboo. He learned that very early in life. And it's his one of his favorite games. He can also do reverse peekaboo. Not everybody can do that, but he can because he's very smart. And we're just gonna put a little glue on that on the thigh bone. We got some glue on the thigh bone. Did you know that the thigh bone is connected to the knee bone, and the knee bone's connected to the shin bone, and the shin bone's connected to the okay. Never mind. Sorry, sorry. I made a mistake there. Okay. Now we're going to adhere him like that. So I'm just gonna use some glue on his arm and on Finn's butt and tail. And we're going to adhere him just like that. Just like that, stay. Stay, there we go. Now, okay, now is where I went off the rails, okay? So this is my design, okay. <laughs> I cut all of these pieces. First off, I should probably save the boots because the boots are the easel and they are non-negotiable. The hat we're gonna put on because he's like a cowboy, hello. So we're gonna put the hat on. And then as I, I, was, I was literally cutting the parts for the second card for this one, you know, so I was getting ready for the video. I was literally cutting the parts and I was like, oh, cowboys wear bandanas. And I thought, you know, this cowboy should wear a bandana. Now, let me show you. I'm going to show you. I got to show you this because it's so cute. It's just so cute. And I'm going to use this because I have it. Okay. Look, 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 watch. Okay. I'm just demonstrating something. Yes, you're welcome. You can have that song for the whole rest of the day. This little stamp right here is just the torso of a skeleton. And you can make this dude be... French with one stamp. No, just look here. I had way too much fun with this, Carol, way. Okay, so you just stamp his little guy right there like that, okay? And then you pull out this stamp, which looks like this on here. This, this is three pieces all on one stamp. That is a beret, a scarf, and a mustache. Now, I would not normally do a mustache in Starry Sky, but this is just for the purposes of demonstration. So you just ink that up, and then all you gotta do is line up the mustache under his little nose. 
If you do that, and it's a little hard to see because it's too dark. It, that was way too dark. Anyway, you can see what it does. If you, if you do a better job than I did, and it works really good on white cardstock with gray skeleton, then all of a sudden you've got a French dude. Let me show you how it looks in real life. When you get it lined up correctly. There you go. Is that not the cutest thing ever? Okay, but if you stamp it in Starry Sky on white and then you cut it out, all of a sudden you have lost. Oh no, where is he? Where is it? Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh no, don't tell me I lost my scarf. Oh, oh nope, there's a... Well, you do, you can get one of those. Hang on a minute, I'm gonna find it because I know it's here. Hang on a second, hang on, hang, be hanging on, be hanging on. Oh, shoot fire. Well, I guess I could cut another one out, but that means I gotta find that piece of white, white cardstock that I couldn't find earlier. That was the problem, was I couldn't find the cardstock, and so I had to do it on gray. Well, here's a beret. No, it's gone forever or until, you know, later. But anyway, that's what I would, I would do. Shoot. Aw, that was gonna be so stinking cute. Wait a minute, I'm keeping looking because I, I don't give up that easy. Look on edge of grid. No, shoot. I've got everything else here. No, he didn't come out of there either. Whale hails bell. Oh, wait, wait. I have an idea where he might have gone. No. Nope. All right, well, no scarf for this one. That's okay, because I had this other idea, too, for it. That's okay. All right, let me put some glue back together. And let's get our guy here. Now, here's the question that I had for you. I had this thought. There's a die set in here. It, you shouldn't just spend a lot of time looking at the dies because you're going to come. Tweezers. Tweezers. Yay. You guys have so many good eyeballs. Thank you so much. Yeah, because he needs the scarf. He just really does need the scarf. Okay. Okay. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you saw it. There. We'll just put a little dibby dab. I'm going to take away a little bit of that because that was too big a dab. It was more dib than dab. We're gonna put his little scarf. This is a nat, uh, a well-dressed dude, I'm just saying. He is not taking this death thing very serious. Okay, now here's my here's my thought. This is, I started to do this on the sample and then I thought it was too, I, I'm not real sure. Okay, go with, I'm gonna show you my thought, okay? So I'm not gonna say anything, you just tell me what you think, okay. I'm not even saying anything. I'm gonna do the bad thing where you have, where you have dead space. I gotta talk, I can't, I can't not talk. It makes me crazy. Um, I thought, I didn't, I, I, I had it ready to go, okay? And then I thought, what if somebody, oh God, what if somebody's husband or, or friend or Thing, was an, a police officer and they thought that I was trying to say I, I hope you your police officer and, and his canine die but then I thought but what if they had somebody in their family who was a police officer a canine officer with a canine and they wanted to send them a Halloween card and that would be so cute what do you think I need I need yeses and nos because thumbs up and thumbs down I won't be able to tell okay yes I should put these on or no I should leave them off I'm gonna wait a second while you guys answer me I, this is important because I think it's really cute, but I don't want to be like offending anybody out there. Boots too. Yeah, the boots are going to go on the inside. He just, you know, bury me with my boots on, kind of like that. Okay, I'm getting un resounding yeses. Oh, good. I'm so glad because I think it's so stinking cute. I saw that and I thought, oh, yes, I got to do it. Okay, so yeah, you can leave these off if you don't like them, but... I think this needs 
Don't you think this is like a Texas Ranger? I think this is a Texas Ranger now. Yes, I am overthinking it. It's it's my superpower, Robin. <laughs> it's absolutely my superpower. Because when I first thought it, I was like, gosh, that's such a good idea. Everybody's just going to be like, ooh, ah. And then I thought, oh, yeah, but what if somebody, what if there's, what if, what if, what if the death knell to creativity is the what ifs. There we go. Oh, God, it's so cute. It is, right? I just, it's so cute. <laughs> I love this set. And you know what? I don't even like Halloween. It's, I don't. But I just have too much fun with this stamp set right here. Okay. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. Yeah, Walker, Texas Ranger. Exactly right. Walker, Texas Ranger. Okay. And then there are also, there's also this little die right here that cuts out bats. And so I did. I have some black bats. Oh, shoot. See, you can't leave your liquid glue open while you're searching for your bandana. Just saying. If you do, you'll end up with glue gobs on the end. All right. And so we're just going to adhere these little guys. And when you cut the stars, you also get a moon. But I didn't think a moon worked because of the moon on the DSP. Good Lord. They're all flying all over the place. All right. Well, he'll he'll show. Oh, wait. Maybe that's him. No. No. Well, he'll be around again in a minute. And I'll put him on. Or I'll cut another one. Okay. So that is the card front. And now what we're going to do is make our easel. I'm sorry. We're going over time today. I'm so sorry. I think it's because I was searching for a bandana that was right in front of me. It's a good thing that wasn't a snake, huh? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two and I cut these from the same DSP that I'd cut my circle. You could cut it from any one. It just depends on what you think your dude would wear. And I'm going to glue them together right on the corner like this. Like, you know, bury me with my boots on. Like that, sort of. And while that's drying, I will get out my dimensionales. I know, a man in uniform. It's, it's hard to resist. It really is. Really is hard to resist. All right. And we'll get some dimensionals. And I'm going to put a few on the back here. And you know me, I'm, I'm never stingy with dimensionals, but you really don't want to be when you're making an easel because it's got to hold, it's got to support the weight here. So give it, give it plenty of dimensional. Make sure you don't have any showing and that's true. We don't. And then what you're going to do is pull off your covers. Pull off your covers. Okay. And I like to hold it with my tweezers. Y'all, if you don't have tweezers, just get them. Really just get them. They're so good. Then what you want to do is you just want to put it in place where you want your easel to stop. And then you can set your easel in place. Like that. And that, as they say in some industry somewhere, is that. Let's do a quick uh, envelope. Hopefully I won't do it upside down like I did my first one. Yeah. And first I'm going to stamp Mr. Kitty. Oh, here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Here, kit, 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 kit. Okay. We're going to stamp him in orange. Now, you could stamp the dog here. So if you're a dog person versus a cat person, put the dog here. I'd put him in Cajun Craze if you do, because that's what color he is on the card. And then I'm going to stamp a couple of bats. Thanks, Carol. Stamp a couple of bats in gray. Here we go. All right, like so, and like so. You know, my, uh, just so you know, my double peppermints is still going on until next week. So please check it out and get your orders in. You saw things are going off the shelf like crazy. So if you have something you want, it's like Costco, get it. Just get it. And I've also got my special bundles, and one of them has the deckled triangles in it. The bundles are different this year. They're mostly for basics, the things that you need to make your cards as you um, pick the things that you like out of the catalog. So check them out. All right, don't forget, make your uh, bats up or down. So if you decided that the bats were hanging upside down on your card, I would put them upside down on the envelope just to keep, the, keep it all very 
coordinated. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Could I zoom in a bit? I really, you know what? I don't, oh, there we go. A little bit. I can zoom in a little bit, but I'm not, it's going to get all weirdo. What is that? What is that? Huh. Oh, <laughs> I, I could see this in the screen and I was like, what in the world is going on with my phone? Actually, I was kind of hoping it was saying, yeah, you know what? I'm about done. You should go get a new one. Go get a new 14, Mary. You should go get a new one. Uh, actually, I think this is a 14. Never mind. Dang it. Okay, there we go. And there we go. And there should be one more bat, and there will be when I find it. Okay? Guys, I appreciate it. I have gone well over time today, and I apologize for that. But I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope that uh, you will make one of these little pop-up cards for Halloween, for Christmas, for birthday, whichever. They're great, and they're easy. All right, everybody. I appreciate it. You have a great rest of your week, and I hope I will see you on Saturday at 7 p.m. Thanks. Bye.